There we go. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Jacob, and I have uh, the wonderful Mr. Brendan over here. Hello. Uh, so today we're going to talk about character, characters, and character building. Um, yeah. So, Brendan, when you uh, uh, when when you find out you're going to be like in a campaign, or you're going to be in like a story or a one shot and you're told you have to come up with a good character, you have to come up with a character, like, what are your first thoughts? Um, personally, you know, I will try and figure out what the, the rest of the group is, is going to be playing so I can fill a hole if needed. Uh, if all the bases are covered, then I'll kind of flip through the, you know, the player's handbook and see if, if anything jumps out of me, any kind of idea forms in my, my brain while I'm thinking about it. Um, other than that, I've had characters based off of video games, off of characters in books. Uh, so anything that, you know, sparks that, that fire inside that makes you go, I want to explore who this person is and can be, you know, so. Uh, do you, what are some of the more memorable characters that you've made or some of the ones that you're like, you're like really happy about like pursuing? Oh man. Um, how much time do we have? We, we have uh, as much time. You can just talk. Yeah, we have plenty of time. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm right now. I'm I've of course in love with Vola. I'm really enjoying playing her. She's she's very fun. She's you know a different type of barbarian. She's not the just smash everything. I mean that's what she's good at, but she is a kind-hearted person and wants to see her friends safe as opposed to you know eat meat smash skulls and drink beer like those are fun but sure. that's not her goals um salazar is one of my favorite he is he is a uh, divine i think he's a divine soul sorcerer and the way that he ended up getting his powers is he is kind of a Frankenstein's monster where he was stitched together with several different people. One of those people is an Asimar. And so he is, his divine soul sorcerer powers come from that Asimar blood that's in him. Ah. So he's been a very interesting character to play. Uh, ran him through Curse of Strahd. You know, it had a very, he had a very gothic feel to his character and it was great for that environment. Uh, my, probably my all time favorite character is a second edition character, a uh, cleric. I ended up playing a lot of clerics because my That's the gap always, character. <laughs> that's the gap <laughs> character. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I always wanted to play fighters or thieves or wizards, especially my brother. It was all about fighters and wizards. Uh, so I played a lot of clerics and Max Hollow is my favorite and she actually started off as a pre-generated character and she just she just grew from there she went from level played her from level one to level i think she's 16 now you know so she's up there um i've run the gamut we played through dive dive and die and a few other very memorable adventures with her so she's great a lot of fun to play definitely um what interested you what interests you about playing uh like a different gender like because like you chose you chose vola to be a girl um and yeah i don't know i think it's just interesting you playing just like you know, a, a gender other than your own so um you know it it really just comes down to who i think the character is a lot of the time there's definitely times where that's one of like the major aspects of the character and then there's other times where it'll be a decision right at the end, you know, where I'm like, this could be a guy or a girl. And then when I'm working out the description of them, like, you know, this sounds more like a male or this sounds more like a female. So that's, it's just kind of a, when I was kind of off the cuff uh, when I decided to do it. Okay. That's, yeah, that's probably, that's probably how most like qualities come about. Uh, so Vola, like you described Vola being like not a uh, traditional barbarian, like some of the qualities that seem like interesting to me about Vola is how reserved Vola is. 
Mm-hmm. Like when I imagine a barbarian, I imagine something like kind of boisterous, like someone kind of raucous, very like very confident and like uh, like bold in speech and action. It feels like Vola is very calculating, uh, uh, speaks only when needed, and is just like will watch like a like a combative situation and like assess the situation before going in. Like that, that clearly must have been like a thought with the character, right? Yeah, I mean, she's she's still young, um, but she's worked as a mercenary before we, we met her. Um, I don't think that's come out in the story yet, but she worked as a mercenary a little bit before we met her. So she's been through some combats, uh, and as such, she's, you know, she's known loss and everything, so it's not something that she wants to experience again. So she's learned... Because half works, uh, half works should start young. I want to say it's like fourteen or fifteen is like the starting age for half works, and she's a little bit older than that. Um, so she's she's learned in her her short time and her short adventuring career, you know, that loss sucks, and she doesn't really want to experience it, that any further. And charging in head first sometimes can cause that. So while she looks ah. that. Well, she's done that on several occasions uh, where the combatant has either irritated her, angered her, or just seems like fun, you know. Sure. Um, you know, she's definitely done that, charging in. But uh, if if needs need be, like, she can do that range combat thing a little bit, you know, throw javelins until she can close that gap and get everybody to focus on her as opposed to harming our poor little our poor little wizards in the background <laughs> at least that's the goal yeah uh okay so when you're setting up uh, a character um and you have like kind of like person personality ideas uh what are you thinking about in terms of like character like arc like uh like uh, like you could use vola as like an example where do you see like vola uh potentially going within the story and in the context of like this group of people that are playing with Vola? Um, Vola, you know, uh, I would like to see her, uh, I would like to see her have more of a, I guess a, a trusting um, personality when it comes to, to, you know, the, the group. She trusts everybody, but I guess she's worried about loss, you know? So I think her, getting away from that worry about worrying about loss is would be would be good for her where she's not expecting all of you guys to die at any given moment type of thing so i think that would be good for her character um there's some stuff in in her her past that can come into play um sure i've discussed briefly with with the uh, the grandmaster dm um if- if there's another character that comes to mind too, where you're like, it, uh, you have a more readily available example of like possible character arcs with them, you can bring that up too. Like, I don't know if you had like a uh, a hard decision to make with any of your characters, like at a point where it was like like a critical point. Oh man, um, <laughs> let's see. Well, okay, so. We'll use we'll use uh, Salazar as an example again. Sure. Um, yeah. So, like I said, he he's essentially Frankenstein's monster. That means mm-hmm. he has Frankenstein. He has his his father, uh, who he's mentioned in in the group and everything. He's talked about, and he's terrified of this being, even though this guy is just a regular guy. You know, he's a scientist. Like he's not anything special but he terrified Salazar to his core and I want to see him overcome that fear and through the the curse of Strahd and we did uh the second ed- nope first edition adventure of uh House on Griffin Hill which is the original Castle Ravenloft continue uh continuation yeah uh through the, the course of those two adventures he encountered and killed his brother that was created to hunt him down. And that was hard for him to the point where when bad things have been, bad things have been happening to him and he thinks he's being punished 
because he killed his brother when he's not entirely sure he needed to. So that's Salazar is a very interesting and very tormented character, and I love playing him because of it. It's very fun. Yeah, that that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, how do you make sure that you're playing within the parameters of your character? Because, like, I, I, like, there are times when I'm playing where I'll definitely go out of character for, like, a joke. Like, it's mostly be, mostly because of jokes, I would say. is like, if I just see any opportunity for a laugh, I'll just, like, easily go out of character. But uh, uh, how, how do you feel about staying in character and, like, about that? Uh, you know, it joke, jokes definitely will do it. Um, I've done it with a lot of characters where I'm like, he probably wouldn't have said that, but it was hilarious. I couldn't pass it up. You know, <laughs> um, aside from that, yeah, I write down all of like their character attributes um, and I read over my character fairly often. So it, it gets lodged in there, you know, this is how this person plays and everything. And I just, I try and stay in character, but eventually you're going to step out of character. You're going to say something, you know, accidentally that's either some sort of like metagaming, you know, is going to like slip out or some sort of joke that is not quite in character, but it was too good to let go, you know, and that happens, but you know, that happens with uh, people in real life. You'll sure. be having a conversation with somebody and they'll say something that's completely off the cuff and you're just like, what? So. Yeah, that that is kind of true, huh? Yeah, in in some ways, like in just everyday life, we're like, um, we're jokingly alternative versions of something else. Yeah, to, for like a <laughs> joke, like we'd say things we normally wouldn't say because we know it's like not okay in the social circumstance or whatever. Yeah, yeah. so like in a lot of ways, we do play out a character, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> we do act in that way. Yep. Um, what was the next question I wanted to ask? Um, oh, like accents and brogues and speech patterns. Like, what are you thinking about? Uh, uh, like, what? Like, how do you how do you think about applying those to your like your character? Do you often like try to like come up with like some elaborate language for your character, or do you just like copy like some other cultures or other dialects? Um, like, how do you go about choosing the uh, the way your person speaks? I guess. I, mean, I love them personally. I think they're great. Uh, my dad is really good at them. Um, yeah, HK is wonderful with them. I'm not. Great at, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not great at them. You know, they uh, they'll drop off uh, a lot of the times uh, while I'm trying to do them. So I typically don't. I'll try and and harsh my voice or soften my voice depending on the character. But a lot of the times I can't carry on like that, a full conversation in yeah, that accent. Sure. So I'm just like, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it seems like, it seems, it's like, yeah, it's, it's very tough. Like I try, I've tried like a, a couple different like accents at the beginning and it's just like hard to carry it on for long periods. Yes. Because yeah. I, I, I feel like I get annoying too. Like, if I, just like <laughs> I don't know. Um, have you had a character where you've played them so much where you feel like uh, that character's life is essentially like been played and that's like the end of the character? Uh, where where do you think is a good stopping point for the character? Like after, after they uh, complete their goals, sometimes characters just die and that's it anyway. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Like, like, in, yeah. Yeah. In terms of like arc though, how do you, when do you think like, it, or even even outside arc, when do you think a character is essentially done? You're done playing them. Um, you know that that varies a lot with the uh, with each character. Um, if they have a set goal, you know, I must avenge my father or something. You know, like, and they do that. That drive to continue adventuring and and searching for clues or whatever the case may be to that goal, it's probably not there anymore. You know. If they found another reason to keep going, then great. But if not, then that's probably the end of that character. Uh, some I've had a few because I have a, I have a few high level, especially second edition characters where they've 
been awarded, you know, castles or whatever throughout the years. Sure. And at that point, they typically end up getting retired because they take on that castle life. But, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I've also had people aged uh, to death. Not, not quite death, but near death by ghosts. Um, so that pretty much will put a cap on that adventuring career real quick when you're running around as an 80 year old. You're just like, okay. And <laughs> you're, you're too old to adventure. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, the next question is what are characters that you've made and then realized while playing them that this was just like not fun or just bad? <laughs> Do you have any of those? Uh, like any characters you regretted making? I have a binder about that thick of characters. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and they're all and they're all great, right? Yeah, they're all they're just, all, they're all just like fabulous to play. No, I would say I've played maybe half, maybe three quarters. Yeah. So if I'm being skinny. generous. Yeah. You know, and then there's a lot of them where I'll look at them and I'm like, yeah, that was a very one shot idea would have been great for an npc like i don't need to make it as a character um i <laughs> i designed as a uh a npc for one of the campaigns that i was running a kind of calvin and hobbs character it was a ranger that had his companion sure. who the companion could like turn into a stuffed animal Ah, that's right. We never, we never got to meet him. Unfortunately, we stopped like right before that we we met him. Um, but I was like, he would be so fun as a character, but for all of like two sessions, probably. You know, because I didn't really, it, I didn't really put much into his personality or anything. Like he was just kind of, it was just the gimmick of it at that point. So when that, when it's just the gimmick, I'm like, yeah. If they don't have a character built into their character then i don't have any interest in them ah that's interesting so are you saying that um typically uh characters that have like a longer shelf life um they have like more goals to them and more character and more personality to identify with and you're saying like probably short-term characters like um they just seem to like be like a joke or a quick quick trope or their objective is just like uh, super close in the future. Hey, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I would I would say so. You know, it's people who who uh, they just typically you know typically it's just somebody that I I made on the fly. Those people I don't usually fall in love with. I'm just like, you know, this is person. This person is a bunch of stats. Yeah. Which is if you're into that kind of role playing, that's totally fine. It just doesn't really. I don't enjoy it as much. You know, I like the the building of the character as opposed to rolling the stats and everything. So if that's the case, then I'll run them for as long as need be um, and then try and swap them out for somebody that I actually really want to play. If sure. I can. But they've, like I said, you know, uh, like Maxala, she's a, she's a pre-generated character. So she was nothing. She was literally just stats, and I completely, throughout playing her and everything, uh, she was the only lawful good character in a group of like lunatics. Like most of them were like chaotic neutral or, or like really kind of. <laughs> you know? So she was like the moral compass and really forced these people into like doing what was good and what was right. And eventually, I like fell in love with her. She went from being a pre-generated character and nothing person to being one of my all-time favorites. So it can happen. It's just okay. Okay. Um, that's really interesting. How do you, uh, have you dealt with the loss of a character that you just couldn't play anymore? Like how, how that, how I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of them are just like not your choice, but, um, how do you play the death of a character, I guess? I don't know if you've had, a, like you, you described one situation earlier where they grew so old, like perhaps they like final words or like final things that they had to do before they died, like something in that realm. Uh, my most memorable character loss, I would say, I was very young when, uh, when this happened, because uh, I've been playing 
I was literally, I think, four when I started playing. Uh, and at the time, we were playing Stormbringer, and my character was named Toka, <laughs> off of the uh, the the turtle from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Two. It's important. No, it's not. It's just a fun fact. Uh, and um, he, we were we were fighting like the the last boss of this adventure. Um, I had my arm broken. I was like completely messed up. But for I don't remember why because it was so long ago. But the, for some reason, the big bad end guy was letting me go. He was like, "This is fine. You can go. It's whatever." And the building was on fire that we were fighting in. And like walked out. I think I drank a potion of healing or something, and then walked right back in there. And then that was it. That was the end of my character. Like he, there was no way that he was going to survive it. But his friends were in there and that was that was it he had no no choice really in the matter like he was going to go in there and try and help his friends and that was the most memorable character loss that i think i've ever had and you're four <laughs> it was like four so this has been a, yeah it's just been a downhill <laughs> <laughs> um let's talk about backstory uh like, so it sounds like with your, uh, like Salazar, you had Salazar is from a, a couple of different people. He and is. then there's like some kind of like Asimar, uh, uh, uh bloodline that allowed for like the use of magic. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, uh, do you, do you mostly think of the backstory in relation to whatever class you chose? Or do you think the back think of the backstory first and then choose the class? Like, what is the relationship there? And then um, how, how do you think you go about creating just compelling backstories, like interesting backstories? Um, and, you know, it's a give and take. Sometimes I will choose the background and the backstory based off of the character uh, class. And other times I will choose the class based off of the backstory. Sure. So it definitely is a kind of a give and take. Sure. Uh, as far as coming up with a compelling backstory. Um, I don't know. I just kind of, th- I, I just think about what, what speaks to me with that, with that particular character, or I guess at that moment in time in like my life, and what kind of person I think would, could be the hero in, in a situation, you know, and then work backwards, like from there and just try and have everything meet up in a cohesive uh non-insane way okay Ooh. um let's see when when you're interacting with players with your character how uh, you're trying uh, i imagine you're trying to be that person vicariously mm-hmm. um how do you go about um uh establishing the relationship between that character and the other characters in like the party if you have any examples of that that'd be great too um again it just kind of you know it depends on the character on the character like uh so volo when we fought those wolves uh aaron was fighting the same wolf that that volo was fighting and when we killed it you know she cut out the heart of it and she took a bite of it and offered it to Aaron because Aaron was fighting that wolf with her. So like that was a bonding moment for her and Aaron, at least in Pola's eyes, you know? Um, So like, there's that. Whereas like Salazar, (laughs) Salazar just randomly decided that uh, Josh's character, my brother's character was going to be his bodyguard because she was the biggest and the strongest out of our group. Yeah. He was just he was just like, okay, you are now my bodyguard, um, <laughs> and you're going to protect me, and you're my best friend, because uh, he's he has like this social he's he's very socially inept, you know. So this person kept coming to his aid because he's the wizard, and she's the fighter. She kept coming to his aid. Same time he's because he's a divine soul sorcerer. They have access to cleric spells, so he could heal her, you know. Yeah. 
Um, so he was kind of like the backup healer for our group. So he was definitely one that they wanted to keep alive. But to him, this this huge half orc just kept coming in and saving his life. So he eventually was like, okay, we're best friends now. So he just, you know, because he because he doesn't have he doesn't have like a family per se, he definitely forms bonds quickly. Uh, as opposed to some other characters that I've had that are like, you know, the lone wolf archetype and whatnot. But. Um, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, have you played a character where the their motives or like maybe their personal like arc is just like way different than the stories, or maybe is even like conflicting at times? Have you had any? Have you had any issues with like other players like in? in relation to like, just like personal goals. Have you experienced that? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, back when we did uh, Die Vecna Die the first time with, and I was, I uh, played through it with Max Alla, which if you're not familiar, you literally go through like several dimensions and you're going to go fight Vecna. And it's one of those adventures where if the entire party is wiped it's not nobody is surprised like sure. you you just kind of expect to get killed. yeah uh well max Allah wanted to stop vecna obviously but one of the other players was secretly a worshiper of vecna was that you it was not me no oh <laughs> what this, is the sounds, other this sounds really good and uh <laughs> so yeah, it uh, it it eventually came came to a head um, between the two of them, and and they had traveled together for a while. Like they leveled up quite a bit, uh, so they had traveled together for years. And she had no idea that he was a worshiper of Vecna, and it came out that he was a worshiper of Vecna, and she like she cut ties with him. Like she couldn't bring herself to kill him because of who she is as a person and, and that wouldn't have fit her character, but she definitely cut ties with somebody that was essentially her, one of her closest friends for, I think like 10 years or something like that. And, and game time. Oh man. Was yeah. it, uh, did you find out like just before the battle? What? Um, like when, when, when was, when was it a, did it come out because that's like a really good reveal that it's kind of like that's something you shouldn't disclose to the group at the beginning you know <laughs> yeah I, I, like i'd see you having those motives and then like if i was that person and i knew that the group was gonna uh try to uh kill vecna destroy vecna get rid of vecna in some way um i would probably be trying to like undermine the group like secretly like we'd be like sleeping and then we wake up and all our tools are gone or wake up and Brennan's left arm is lopped <laughs> off or something. You know? Yes, absolutely. Uh, with him in that particular situation, it was, it was revealed at, cause we had been sent. Sorry. It's been like, it's been like 17 years. Sure. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. We can, we can wait. Let us sit here. We had been sent it. to retrieve an item that was supposed to be there and in the course by the Vecna worshiper. So he was operating in an NPC capacity. Um, and in the course of trying to retrieve that item, we ended up discovering that Vecna was like rising. So we stopped Vecna, but then when we returned the item uh, to the person that had essentially, you know, asked us to go retrieve the item, that's when it was, it came out. So it was, it was after the adventure was over. Fortunately, he was not there during the fight with Vecna. Otherwise, you know, one of them would have, I'm sure ended up dead at that sure. point. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing they could have done about it, but yeah. So she, she was kind of in that mindset. She's like, okay, you know, Vecna's gone. Like, dead yeah. um <laughs> at least uh, she thought he was dead you know um mm -hmm. so there was no reason for her to like try and kill this, this worshiper 
but that was definitely the end of their their companionship they they haven't traveled together since then they've become mortal enemies you know since that time has happened so it's an interesting little background story as as lower level characters are going through uh through adventures and, and leveling up and whatnot no that's good uh this this makes me think about um uh character information and how it's like kind of given out at times and like like it kind of seems like it's a good idea like like story wise to kind of like give out information like occasionally instead of all at once um uh like with that with agnia she was like so ready to just tell her whole backstory that she was just like uh um like a runaway bride from like like some island like just off the coast and like i don't know i don't know she was just like so ready to tell everyone that and <laughs> she was excited it's wonderful yeah um i so i imagine it's like like there are times where it feels more natural to give information right it's like okay i've been adventuring with these people i can speak more freely because i i know them as players now and i know the characters better um are you conscious of that at all of giving too much of your character like out all at once? Cause it seems like you're like trying to pace your character in a way where if the character is to develop trust, it's kind of like a slow trust. Like that's how I, that's kind of what I get from Vola. Yes. And yeah, that, that is very much Vola's character is she's, she's slow to trust her, her, you know, well at, at that time, like we had literally met about 12 minutes beforehand yeah. Yeah. We were shopping in Agni. It was like, I'm a runaway bride, guys. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, Vola's slower to trust. Um, but that totally makes sense with the way that Agnia has been played. Like, she's she's a very dramatic character, you know? And it, it's funny because it's kind of reflected in her roles, like, sometimes. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, uh, Vola... Vola is slower to trust, so as time goes on, she will have more information to talk about about herself. Um, but I've definitely played the the more lighthearted uh, characters. Somehow, the the ones that we're talking about here are predominantly the uh, the darker, <laughs> darker, quieter characters. But uh, yeah, I've definitely played the the upbeat you know goofy fun loving ones as well and um usually with them it's just kind of like a word vomit you know just let it all fall out until i'm stopped type of thing Mm. yeah yeah she yeah she just kind of like lets loose uh when you're uh do you have any examples of when you've played a character where you've acted in a way that's kind of typical of the character, but maybe it's like not necessarily serving an o- like the overall like storyline or goals. So goals, like for example, like I had a character that just like really liked pastries. So like every town you go in, you just like get, fi- figure out whatever the local pastries are and go eat them. Or there are times where uh, like after a battle, we'd, we'd be like on a beach and we'd, uh, I like, guess this isn't many times. Sometimes after like a long day, we'd be on the beach and um, this is after the fight. And then we're just like drinking like in this fairy tale world on the beach as the tide's rolling in. And you're just like watching nature like unfold kind of before you. Do you have like any moments uh, uh, like this that come to mind? Hopefully I explained that well. If I didn't, I could try to rephrase. No, it's kind, it's kind of tough. Um, you know, Vola uh, playing with that spider um, in our most recent session is definitely up there with one of those kind of moments. Like, she definitely could have been helpful in that situation. You know, uh, she's not much of a talker, but she is a intimidating force. For and sure. Instead, instead of helping, she's literally just playing with a spider while you guys are <laughs> your life threatened. You know, uh, so that that scenario definitely is is very prominent in my mind right now. Um, I've had I've had characters that would I was playing a, a monk 
a halfling monk with uh, my little brother not too long ago. And they got into a, a bar fight and she's literally eating a turkey leg the whole time. So, you know, <laughs> just watching and commenting and eating a turkey leg while her companions are getting punched in the head. So it, it definitely happens depending on the character. Yeah, I feel like that's like a classic joke, like something, yeah, there's some kind of brawl and then one character is like nonchalantly doing whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They, absolutely. They're totally indifferent. Yeah, it was quite the quite the trope moment for me, but I loved it. All right. Uh do you think do you have any last thoughts on like characters per maybe building them? Uh or like thinking just thinking about characters in general, do you have any like last thoughts? Um, you know, play what play what you love to play. Like uh as Class doesn't necessarily have to determine your character, your character's character, neither does race uh, or, or background, you know, it, none of that has to do with your character's personality, like, that's, that's separate and it's its own thing and play what you feel like you're going to have fun playing and don't get bogged down with stats, that's something that I see a lot of people get carried away with, they're like, oh, my stats aren't the best, you're like, well, that's, that's fine. So long as you're having fun, you know, and that's what it's all about is we're, we're literally playing a game about fantasy creatures and characters to get away from life in general for a little while. So play yeah. what you're having fun with.